Tesla have finally updated the Model S and Model X interiors. Unlike me, who still needs an update on the outside due to my lockdown haircut getting worse and worse, Tesla have redesigned the outside of the car a tiny, tiny bit, but the interior has had a full refresh. They've removed the gear selector, they've removed the indicator stock, they've added this yoke steering wheel, which probably won't make it to the UK market. So stick around for today's video, where we'll be going into what all these new things actually mean and do, and how everything is not as it seems. And before we get into the fact it's got no indicators and it doesn't have a drive selector and the car will actually pick drive or reverse for you, let's actually look at inside what they've done to the refresh interior. Firstly, both the Model S and X now have a landscape screen similar to the Model 3 that I currently use. And it was gonna go this way for a very long time because that's, that's the way the Model 3's gone and people do prefer that look. Now a lot of Model S and X owners personally prefer the portraited look and I get why that is and it's because they saw the Model 3 with the screen poking out and they wanted it built in the dash like the S. Well they pretty much got what they wanted but in landscape. This is so it can play the computer games easier and personally I prefer the way it maps on that screen. I think it's a lot better for the mapping. I also feel it's easier to see all the controls because of the way they're laid out rather than the, the portrait view, but a lot of S and X owners will find a small time getting adjusted to this new screen, but I honestly think that you'll love it as soon as you've started to use it more properly. However, they still want everything to tie in with the family of the Model 3, so you can see that they have copied quite a lot of the features from the 3 to the S and the X. And the first one here is this mobile phone docking system and the draw, which is pretty much identical to the new Model 3 refresh that's just recently come out that I did a video on recently. So it's got that new non-covered part where the mobile phones go on the wireless charging. It's slightly different, but it's pretty much the same design language and the same design as the draw. And I, I prefer it on the S and the X, but I don't like it on the 3. I used to prefer the original 3 center console, but I can see why Tesla did the free now because they obviously had the S and X plan already in place and they were bringing the, the Model 3 ready for this S and X so everything looks seamless and ties in together. However, this is where the similarities with the Model 3 end and some of them, yes, will probably likely come to the Model 3, which we'll get into the indicator stalks and the drive stalks and stuff like that. But the thing that I honestly can't see coming to the Model 3, so the Model 3 keeps its lower price entry, is the rear eight inch screen. So the eight inch screen has been added to the rear seats for the passengers to use. And there's a couple of reasons for this eight inch screen. Now, firstly, it will allow the kids to play Tesla Arcade on this screen. This screen will allow the Tesla Arcade games to be played. It will also allow wireless gaming. So they can actually use the wireless remotes completely wirelessly to play the games on the Tesla Arcade system. But it's got a fairly powerful computer processor in the Tesla. It's got a 10, is it tera, teraflops of processing power in the computer, 10 ter teraflops of processing power. So it's a powerful machine. In fact, it's probably just as powerful as some of the current gaming computers, so gaming uh, consoles being sold in the market today. So it's a decent system, wireless remote so the kids can play in the back while you're driving, and not distracting the driver. I actually think, that this is probably one of the best parts of the SNX refreshes. I think it's really, really gonna shorten journeys for people with kids who've got the SNX models. Uh, now let's look at the steering wheel. It's a yoke and uh, this, I honestly do think is a Tesla stunt. And the reason I think it's a Tesla stunt is anyone who's driven a Model S or a Model X or a Model 3 can tell you it's certainly not a Honda E when it comes to turning circles. They're not great turning circle cars. And some of my American fans will be watching this and go, oh, well, it doesn't matter too much. It's because in America, your car parks are larger, your roads don't have the bends that we have. But here in the UK, in the rest of Europe, those cars with that yoke steering wheel and will be undrivable. And in fact, in the UK and Europe, that steering wheel will not legally be allowed to be fitted, which is why I luckily found this image on Tesla's website before they removed it, which is an interior shot 
of the Model S with a standard steering wheel on the new design. So it will be available with this normal steering wheel and I suspect it will be only sold with that all over the world. I do think that this is actually a stunt of Tesla. Now they have actually said it'll come with a yoke and the normal steering wheel will be optional but I just can't see it being sold with this car. If anyone's ever driven a car with a yoke steering wheel, they are undrivable unless you're on a racing track and only doing very, very tight turns. If you're doing three point turns or turning in car parks, it's just not practical. We don't need indicators where we're going, do we Elon? No, we don't, not according to Elon because he's removed the indicator stalks. And again, this is, I think, on the edge of being a Cybertruck PR stunt. I honestly do think they'll be fitted with some kind of indicator. I do think that there'll be an indicator on the steering wheel. And if you look very closely at some of the images, there does look to be some sort of two buttons on the standard steering wheel that do look like they could be indicators uh, fitted on the steering wheel rather than stalks. And I just can't see them not having indicators. Now it will tie into the possibility of not having indicators when we get into the gear selector in a minute. But let's just have a look on why they maybe not showing any indicators and why they're saying they don't need any indicators. Tesla have always, always made it very clear that their cars will be full self-driving and will not require a driver. That's the ultimate Tesla plan. Now, by removing the indicators, removing the gear selector, you are telling your customers, your shareholders, your fanboys, you're ready. You're ready now for full self-driving. You don't need the gear selector. You don't need the indicator because the car will do it because the car is going to be driving itself. And when they are forced to fit these indicators in certain markets or forced to fit these gear selectors in certain markets, it's almost Elon going, well, we were ready, but we were told we couldn't do it yet. And it just gets the, the whole Tesla fan group and shareholders investing more and more into Elon's uh, shares and plans. And if you are thinking of buying Tesla shares, go to evnick.com forward slash free share you can get a free trading account for buying Tesla shares or any shares, but you'll also get one free random mystery share at a random price, completely for free when you sign up. It couldn't cost you anything to trade. There's basically the one of the best trading websites I've used. There's a link there and all about it on my website if you go to evnick. This for me is one of the weirdest parts, um, and that is the fact that there's no gear selector, because it's best if I just show you Elon's tweet. Uh, Elon's tweet clearly says the car will know uh, which direction you want to go in. It will know that you, you know, you want to drive forward out of that parking space rather than reverse. It will know that you're wanting to do a reverse turn in that road when you can still go forward. It will know all these things because it'll have the sat nav and camera information and the car will just know. I just can't see it working, but I am fully expecting Elon to prove me wrong and it for it to be absolutely fantastic. The one thing I've learned about Elon Musk is if you tell him he can't do something, he'll go and prove you wrong. You tell him he cannot land two, three rockets simultaneously standing up, he'll land them simultaneously standing up because he just doesn't like being proved wrong. So I'm sure it'll work. Um, but I do have one scenario which I do worry about. And let's just say you take your wife to the top of a nice cliff to watch the sunset. You're at the top of this cliff watching the sunset and you've built up such reliance and trust on your Model S and Model X over the years of always selecting the right gear to be in the car. So then you expect it to go in reverse and you hit the accelerator as you do a Felman Louise off the cliff uh, to your peril. And, and, and that's uh, that's what I'm worried about. I'm worried about the trust of people will be so reliant on the car always selecting the right gear that one day someone will just hit the gas and have a terrible accident. Um, may not be a cliff, it might just be smashing into a parked car. Um, but in theory, anything parked in front of you, the camera should detect. But what about that? those unknown things there? there's no barrier and you're at the top of a cliff or the edge of something, I can just see it going wrong. And that's just just me being critical, but I'm sure they will prove me wrong. And I am hoping Elon will prove me wrong. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much. And I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.